hello guys welcome back to our channel we are so excited to have you again as nigerians are being swallowed up by the trouble besieging us in terms of insecurity banditry kidnapping fight against uh, fulani hates men and all of that some other things are happening which by the time we realize we will not seem to have a country of our own even if we secede from nigeria but yet our own forces may have suffered unthinkable destruction by the hands of not the full and he hates men but foreigners you'll be so shocked who these foreigners are they are they breeding and doing all manner of things inside our forest the question is what are they actually doing in our forests that has made the Nigerian Human Rights Commission to cry out, or human rights uh, community to cry out and seek for help immediately from the federal government. What is actually happening? That's what we are going to look at right now. Because um, the truth is, uh, most of the time, uh, if you are trying to put fire in your house, or sorry, if fire is burning in your house, most people that come, they are not coming to salvage it. But to take a, take the opportunity to steal that which belongs to you. So even as you are trying to checkmate the fire, do well also to make sure that you are not losing your property. And unfortunately, that's not what is happening in Nigeria. You're going to see what is going on, how much we have been raked by these foreigners. And I'm sure you will know who they are. But it's good to just reveal who they are. But before we do all of that, if you've not subscribed to our channel, kindly hit on the red subscribe button and also the bell icon so that you can get notification anytime we publish our videos. All right, let's look at the news in detail. The Nigerian forests and the resources they harbor are not only under attack by local and foreign killer headsmen, our forests are also stripped bare by these people the Chinese, the Lebanese, and the Korean illegal loggers mm. and this was brought to the front burner of the national discourse in lagos by the nigerian human rights community in a press conference the title illegal wood export in nigeria and the far-reaching consequences of economy human rights and sustainable development the paper was presented by taiwo adeleye of the NHRC and they address critical issues of devastation of Nigerian environment and illegal wood export, which has left bitter pills on the lips of many Nigerian community. Mm. And in, in, in the press conference, Adeleye, Adeleye yeah, said, what we are seeing across Nigeria is a blatant rape of our environment by combined dubious synergy of local and international conspirators. Our forest reserve, wood species, and economic trees have been mauled down in desperation. Forest resources that determine the livelihood of millions of Nigerians. As we speak, Nigeria is hub to this to the largest illegal exportation of illegal wood in Africa. What is going on is the silent and vicious killing of our livelihood, the destruction of our future as a country, and the violation of Nigerian constitution in the most savage, rude, and provocative manner in Nigeria. Some of these foreigners are indiscriminate in the attack on indigenous territories. After all, now, it's not their own, so why would they care so much about what is happening? Some of these represent some 66% of the foreign reserve are located in the savannah area. Some 20% of the land area are in the tropical forest zones all in the southern Nigeria, while like 4% are freshwater swamp and mangroves located by nature in the Niger Delta area. At Independent, Nigeria had at least 8 national parks and 445 nature reserves. Today, more than half of all of them are gone. Hmm. In, 2000, in the year 2005 alone, about 11,000 hectares were destroyed in Nigeria. Between 1990 and 2000, the country lost some 409,000 hectares of forest reserve. The year between 1990 and 2005 saw Nigeria lost 35.7% of her forest strength, which translated to 6,145,000 6, hectares. 
Now, the implication on agri of this on agriculture, sustainable livelihood, spiritual well-being, climate change, and political economy is unimaginable. These acts violate the Nigerian Constitution and the various United Nations Convention on Environment, including but not limited to the UN Convention on Biological Diversity and the Right of Indigenous People. Now, let, let's look at the places that are worst hit by this. According to NHRC, in the past three months, it has been receiving reports from across the country from indigenous people whose livelihood is threatened and their forests are on the verge of extinction. These communities, according to NHRC, said are helpless. Mm. They face a hopeless situation. Now, those who are most affected, are the communities most affected are in Ogun, Oyo, Ondo, Ekiti, Kwara, Kogi, Oshun, Cross River, Rivers, Bayelsa, Edo, and Delta states. In the northern states, most hit are Plateau, Nasarawa, and Benue states. The main actors in this fraud are the Chinese, the Koreans, and the Lebanese, who have no other job than to invade the forest, cut down the trees for export in the most ignorable, vicious, and callous manner. There is no environmental impact assessment, no pyro and informed consent of affected indigenous community, while the desperate hunt for these precious forest reserves continue. It may interest Nigerians to know that these precious forest trees that that cut that trees that cost fortunes are never replanted. In other words, they cut it, they don't even plant it. They are never replanted by these foreigners who feast on them. Their main target are Rose Woods, Araria, Araria, Mahogany, and Iroko Kai. Annually, some 3.5 percent, approximately 350,000 to 400,000 hectares, are destroyed per year in Nigeria with those activities linked to the Chinese, Koreans, and Lebanese cartel. The destruction of these forest reserves by these foreign interests has serious implications by sustainable livelihood in the country. The implications are damaging to the local economy and natural habitat. An increase in local timber prices leading to the shutdown of factories, thereby forcing many out of job. Additionally, local manufacturers cannot get logs to run their factories again. Other consequences include destruction of the local industry, increase in timber price leading to increase in cost of construction, housing, roads, drainages, flood areas, Violation of uh, indigenous rights as communities receives the destruction of their land, leading to conflict. Obviously, increase in timber price will increase cost of manufacturing, like pallets, pri pri pallet prices, packaging and transportation costs, excessive and illegal deforestation, will affect natural habitat and pose a threat to food security across the country. And now, NHRC are calling; the, they are putting a call to the presidency. That's the President Muhammadu Buhari, in the National Assembly, the Nas National Assembly and the 36 state governors in Nigeria to immediately carry out the following without delay. The Chinese, Lebanese, Koreans and all foreigners involved in illegal exploitation of Nigerian precious wood resource should be banned. The Presidential Pro Panel and Judicial Commission of Nigeria should be set up in all the affected states to identify punish and sanction all the foreign interests and their collaborators in, involved in this illegal business. In line with the provision of Nigerian law, the Nigerian prohibition list which states that timber cannot be exported in rough and sown form, which is the form this illegal exporter moved the wood, and in line with the Convention on International Trade in Danger Species of Wild Fauna and Flora Cities, the perpetrators must be brought to book. NHRC vowed to embark from the day of the conference on the local and global campaign against all the individual and foreign interests in this illegal business. According to them, they say, we shall embark on petitions to government institutions, the Chinese, Lebanese, Korean government, and the United Nations to stop this criminal act and bring the perpetrators to book without delay. Mm. So which means, as you fight your brother, they try to look back. You're fighting your brother. hey, hey, hey. You, you are doing as if life will end if you don't fight him and bring him under control. 
be also checking. Now, the military are in the south is because of the insecurity. The question is, how about forest guards that are kept in all of these places? Because before these guys will successfully go into our forests and hijack some of our natural resources, our ecological resources, they may have gotten consent from some persons who have been paid stipend. And they will say, okay, this is the area to go to. And when these guys go there, they will bulldoze into the area. They don't even care whether they are destroying the topography of the soil, whether they are destroying the habitats of our animals. They don't care. What they want is to make money because we are not conscious of the value of the things we have. Look at what is going on. By the time we get back ourselves and say, all right, let's go back to the bushes and see how we will start enjoying ourselves. Unfortunately, nothing is left again because these guys are there doing all manner of things. I like to leave it there. Please, just try to be economical in your description. What do you think um, should be done to these Lebanese and Koreans who are behind this?